Welcome. Welcome to the porch on Firefall Talk Radio. I'm Richard Grund. This is where we get back to basics, the red letter basics. We study the Word of God as it was written, content and context. We focus on the book of Acts Church, and we see how the early church served the Lord. We do that to follow their example, to learn from what they did right and what they did wrong. We take a deeper look into how they did things for the kingdom of God, because our desire has always been to find and restore the priesthood of the believer and regain the world-shaking influence that the early church had. We believe that we are finding, we are finding, we haven't found it yet, we're getting there, the church the Lord intended and not the one that man created. We're still dealing with the man-made problems. But it's okay because the church age is not over. What happened in the upper room is as much for today as it was on the day of Pentecost. If you know that, if you know that there's more to your spiritual walk with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, and you want more, then join us on this journey as we get back to basics. If you have any questions, please visit firefalltalkradio.com, use the contact button, or write us directly at the porch at firefalltalkradio.com. If you would like to support us, and we hope that you would, and for those of you that do, thank you. Go to firefalltalkradio.com, bottom of the page of the new site. There are multiple ways to do so. If you have any questions, just let us know. We appreciate you, appreciate your support and encouragement as you send emails, letting me know what these Bible studies are doing in your life. It really excites me and encourages me, and I thank you when you do. Welcome to all of our listeners from the various streaming platforms. Subscribe to us there. Make sure you know when a new session of The Porch is uploaded, or you can listen to us live. For now, on Spreaker, we've been notified by Spreaker that they will no longer allow live broadcast, which means I will either have to switch to Podbean or go back to Blog Talk Radio. I haven't figured that out yet. If you need prayer, let us know. A new prayer email is going out in the morning if you're a part of that group. Keep an eye out for it. Subscribe to us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We post. Um, And aerial support, we really could use it. A lot going on right now. Some of it will be in the email. Start out praise reports and prayer requests. So first of all, we praise, I do, for my salvation. Without that, nothing else matters. I praise him for giving me back my family and saving me and that his grace is still amazing that his love is overwhelming. My home, my wife, my family, my furry kids, everything I have, all good things come from God above. I praise him for his protection as we live in this fallen world with the enemy running amok. I trust him. Praise him for this ministry, his ministry, that he allows me to work for him. Praise him for each and every one of you. You're very important to me. If I know you by name, even if I don't, I pray for you as a part of the porch community. If you'd like me to know your name or your family's name or your pet's name, email me, and I will include them in the prayers every day. I stand guard. I stand watch against the wolves. That's what you need. I'm not saying I'm your shepherd. I'm just saying that's what you want, a shepherd that stands guard over the flock, in between the wolves and the sheep. Too many hirelings out there that don't understand that. I praise him for the dreams and the visions and the inspiration and everything he's showing me. For his healing virtues, I believe that they are still there. And whether I get them today or tomorrow or it takes me getting to paradise, I will have them. And I believe that we should pray for them and believe to go back to our divine design. If you don't know what that is, you ask me, and I'll send you a link to the C conference we did in 2019 where we talked about that. I praise him for being able to praise him in everything for everything, having a renewed spirit man for the signs of the times the king is coming. We need to get ready for the king, so let's pray. Pray for the 
peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say peace be within you. Psalm 122, verse 6 through 8. The coming kingdom, the new Jerusalem, will be in Israel. So we need to pray for them. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters. We need to pray against the evil of the world, the anti-Semitic spirit of the Antichrist, trying to destroy them. For the Israeli hostages to be returned, their bodies to be returned, and for Gaza to be set free from the control of Hamas. And that everyone who participated in or supported financially or politically in the October 7th attack be exposed. Pray for the fatherless and the widows, the innocents, the victims of injustice, the martyrs, our brothers and sisters that are out there suffering for their faith in God, their faith in Yeshua. I pray for divine wholeness, health, and healing in me and my wife and my family. As I said, getting back to our divine design, I believe that's his will for us. And yes, we've done it through diet, and we've done through bad choices, and the world's done it to us, and the the food that they give us. But you know what? We can pray against it, and we can undo that damage. We can make the changes that need to be made. If you're sick, I pray for you right now in the name of Yeshua, be healed, be made whole. Have him reveal to you anything that you're doing or is happening to you that is making you sick. I pray for his protection, that Psalm 91 covering over us, over me, my family, homes, pets, possessions, over you. For the inspiration and the fire of the Holy Spirit that drove the book of Acts Church to be ours. For the remnant to wake up, rise up, answer the call to action. Don't you hear the sound of the shofar? Pray for the blessings to flow, that those who have been blessed would be a blessing, and we wouldn't hold tight and hoard anything, but let it flow freely to further the kingdom. For us to pray in unity and unison, to push the enemy back, to be proactive instead of reactive, set the captives free, to be edified, encouraged, inspired, to take down the principalities that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God and turn loose the gospel, turn loose this light we're talking about. Shine it, set them free, show them the way. I pray that we would operate efficiently in the calling, exposing the enemy, seeking the lost, helping the dying, breaking the chains of bondage, opening the prison doors, and destroying all the works of the enemy. Father, We praise you. We love you. We thank you. Bless this technology. Bless the words. Bless our time together, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the cross, the empty tomb, the upper room. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the use of your name to be able to sit with you in the heavenly places. You sit at the right hand of the Father, and we sit with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us and teaching us and being patient with us. Speak to us. Don't let us get lost. Don't let us wander down the wrong road. Remind us of Yeshua. Remind us what he said and what he meant. Have your way this night. Let this word go forth and do what you desire it to do. And I pray all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. These lessons are proprietary information, except where noted the information comes from outside sources. The combination of that information, the matter presented, is exclusive, cannot be repeated or used without permission. The date of this broadcast serves as the registered date of the following information. Francis of Assisi said, All the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light of a single candle. Be that light. Even if it's just you, be the light that he needs you to be. We're still in that. We're still talking about the light tonight. We're talking about the kingdom of light. 
I want to go back to a scripture I read last week, Colossians 1, starting verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. And he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Let the enemy hear that. He has rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of of his beloved son in whom we have what redemption because of his sacrifice, because of the blood resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sin's penalty. Our desire is to live in the light which makes us agents of change and divine disclosure of the working of the enemy. And if we don't do that, others who are lost in darkness cannot find their way out. The kingdom of the Son of His love is what? It's the kingdom of light. It's the kingdom of God. Holman Bible Dictionary says the kingdom of God is God's kingly kingly rule or sovereignty. The Old Testament contains no references to the kingdom of God. However, in the Old Testament, God is spoken of as ruling. Psalm 47, verse 2, For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great king over all the earth. Psalm 103, 19, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Daniel talks about it repeatedly in talking to King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. He said, this decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he will, and sets over it the lowest of men. Later on in verse 23, he explains to Nebuchadnezzar the dream that Nebuchadnezzar has and had, and this is what Daniel said. Inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound it with a band of iron and bronze and the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High which has come upon my lord the king. They shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Nothing has changed. Oh, man thinks he's in control. God's in control. And the Old Testament emphasis on God's sovereign power over all the kings and kingdoms sets the stage for the New Testament teachings by Yeshua because Yeshua made the kingdom of God central in his preachings. More than a hundred references to the kingdom appear in the gospel, many in the parables. And what did Yeshua mean when he spoke of the kingdom of God? He meant quite simply the rule of God. The kingdom of God is the reign of God. Well, if there's a kingdom, that means there's what? There's a king. And the king is who? His beloved son. King of kings and lord of lords. There is none other but him. He's the one who sits on the throne. If there's a kingdom... It has parameters and boundaries. 
I may have shared this. I know I have. Larry and I were talking about it today again. Many years ago, probably around 2010, when the Lord was shifting my understanding of spiritual warfare in the supernatural realm, he began to explain to me about the kingdom. And he said to me, when you, when you stay within the walls of the kingdom, you have diplomatic immunity. The enemy cannot touch you. Even though you're in this world, you're not of this world, and you are protected. But it's when you go outside the walls of the kingdom that the enemy has access to you. And what does the enemy do? He goads you into coming out to fight him. He tricks you into coming beyond the walls so he can have access to you. If we would just stay Within the parameters and boundaries of the kingdom, the enemy would not have access to us. And the kingdom of light, we have been empowered and established in that kingdom to dispel darkness. And because of how important that is, there can be no hindrance or dimmer switch on this light. Yeshua said in Matthew 5, starting verse 14, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, no, no, we can't do that, Richard. We have to be seeker-friendly. We can't talk about sin. We can't talk about righteousness. Oh, we can't talk about the blood. We can't talk about the cross. You'd better. If you're going to tell people in the world that Jesus gets them, then tell him, though, he also sees what you do. Yes, he loves you just as you are, but too much to let you stay that way. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus the Messiah. Light, that Greek word phosphor, we get phosphorus from. It means light, it means fire. To give light, to literally be seen by the eye or metaphorically reach the mind. Man in his natural state is incapable of receiving spiritual light because his natural mind lacks the capacity for spiritual things. That's why when you you try to share spiritual things with people, that's why born-again believer, spirit-filled believer, and you talk to unsaved people about demons and 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 this thing and that thing, and you, you talk to them as if they should know what you're talking about, but they don't, and all you're going to do is alienate them and push them away. More than that, you're going to frighten them or make them think you're irrational, and our goal is to draw people, not push them away. Their minds can't grasp that. 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural mind does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So we are called children of light, sons and daughters of light, not because we have just received the revelation from God, but because in our new birth, being born again, we've received the spiritual capacity to understand it and disseminate it. But the world doesn't want it. So either A, you shut up, or B, you find a way to shine it to them anyway. John three nineteen. This is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So don't bring your light around me. Don't bring your light into this bar. Don't bring your light into this homeless camp. Well, I'm going to anyway, and I'm going to do it in such a way that not only will you accept it, you will want it because I'll bring it in love. See, the basis of the judgment against the world, the unsaved world, the indictment against them by which they will be judged 
and the grounds for their sentence lies in this. The light, Yeshua, the Messiah, has come into the world. And people, first his own and then the rest, they love darkness rather than and more than light because their works, their deeds, their actions, their thoughts were evil. When people live in spiritual darkness, whether by desire and design or bondage, they don't desire to be enlightened by or about Yeshua, the light of the world. I didn't. Before he opened my eyes, I didn't. I didn't want to hear it. Evil and darkness doesn't ignore that light. It wages war against it. It tries to bring it down. It tries to shut it off and extinguish it, but it can't. In the end, their sins will be exposed. Everything hidden will be brought out into the light. Everything you've done, everything you've ever said, everywhere you've ever been, he already knows. John twelve forty eight. he who rejects me does not receive my words and does not receive my words, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. They won't be able to say they didn't know. They won't be able to say no one told them or that they didn't understand. That should... That should bother you. Not because you'll be that person, but people you know and care about will be. Revelation 20, starting verse 11. I don't know where I was going, but I wasn't going to 20, and I changed it in midair, so that's good recovery. Revelation 20, starting verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, capital H, we know Yeshua, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I have been written into the Lamb's book of life. My name is in there, and my works, both good and evil, are covered by the blood. So that's all he sees. So this light is the very nature of God. That's why I don't understand people who claim to be born again. They do such evil things in the dark. They're not born again. That That's a pretty obvious answer. But light is the nature of God. First John 1 John 1.5, this is the message we've heard from him, from Yeshua, and declare to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. None. Not even a little bit. Not a shadow. Not a variance in it. That's because Yeshua sits at his right hand said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not, what, walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, if you're following him, you can't walk in darkness. Even if you make a mistake and wander through the wrong door or wander down the wrong road and you see that there's darkness, you won't go there. You'll turn around and go back. You cannot walk in the darkness and say that you are following him. He is the light of the world. He has put that light inside of us. And according to prophecy from Isaiah and Zechariah and in Revelation, when 
the messianic reign on earth begins, he will literally be the source of all light. Isaiah 60, starting verse 19. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor brightness shall the moon give light to you, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light, and your God your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and the days of your mourning shall be ended. Zechariah 14, 7. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. All things will be light. Revelation twenty one twenty three. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. From whatever's left of the world at that time before he remakes it, all light will come from Jerusalem and it will light the whole world because of him. Over the last couple of weeks, we've said the scripture. I hope you're getting it, First Peter 2, nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who, what, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Maybe you have to remember that. Maybe you have to remember when you were in darkness, the things that you did in the darkness. And he saved you and redeemed you and called you out of it. I mean, when you look at Amazing Grace and and the man who wrote it, And what he had done, he was a slave trader, and he understood he was once in darkness. He was lost, but now he was found. We have been transferred from where? The kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. Now, right now, what keeps the light on? Well, it's the Holy Spirit Power Company, HSPC. And the bill has been paid. It's never going to run out. Your spiritual light bill has been paid. You won't be getting any bills from the HSBC asking you for payment. It's also in his word. That's why I harp on the word. That's when I harp on the fact you need to know the word. You need to get this word inside of you. You won't be fooled by the world. You won't be fooled by the enemy. You won't be fooled by false teachings or New Age influences if you know the Word. You'll know what you're hearing doesn't line up with what's in his Bible. Psalm 119, 105, The Word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. That Word, both living and written, Logos and Rhema, keeps the fire burning inside of you. I am amazed at how many people who claim to be believers and love the Lord know so little of his word. And the one thing I will tell you about his word, signs and wonders follow the word. Miracle signs and wonders are a byproduct of his word, which brings light into the darkness of this world. A sure, pure word is the true, is the source of the true kingdom of God light. I am thankful that I learned, fed, and was trained under Pastor Robert Shelley. He gave me a hunger for the word. He gave me a hunger to understand what did it mean? What were they saying? What was the context? What was the content? What was the message? What was the meaning? How do I apply it? That's why I give you so much word and so much scripture and and, and the list, which, by the way, I forgot to send out. I'll send it out as soon as we're done. If you're listening live, then I'm sorry. But if not, you'll have it by the time you do listen to it. 
That's why it's so important to know it. And knowing the right word. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen, Paul talks about false apostles, false teachers. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Messiah. But I'm not surpri- surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserves. Satan inspires false teachers and ministers, false ministers, to imitate Christianity, to imitate the Word, to pervert the Word, to tell you things that I am so shocked, people are so ignorant not to see false teacher. They may even do miracles. You may even see some false signs and lying wonders there, but the Lord re- re- he warned us about that in Matthew twenty four twenty four, For false messiahs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. We are living in a time, and I've only been saved, what now, 35, almost 36 years? So I can only give you the context of my salvation where I'm seeing a shift in the power and the presence of the enemy unlike anything I've ever seen before. And I've done a lot. If you've read my book, you know that. If you've heard me speak or teach or seen me in action, you know that. What I'm seeing right now is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's also unlike anything that's coming. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, starting verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord, whom Adonai, will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved." And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And it's no wonder Satan, Hasatan, the adversary, the prince of darkness, the ruler of the kingdom of darkness, the god of this world, He can disguise himself as an angel of light. These false angels have filled churches. They've talked to people. They've presented themselves to famous people who were deceived and went to their own destruction. And his servants, the ministers of evil, those that he has ordained and raised up, they will be disguised as ministers of righteousness, reverend this, a Ph.D. that, apostle this, prophet that. Because his main tool against the truth is deception, it's sleight of hand, it's it's making you look away from the truth to see the deception, to see the, the fake and the phony. And these false teachers, as Paul said, will deceive the church because they do a great job of pretending to be true believers, true apostles, true disciples of Messiah. But we who are mature in the faith should not be surprised by that. We already know from the Word, from Genesis to Revelation, from the the testimonies and the sharings of those who have real, true experience, that Satan's most destructive efforts are accomplished through deception when he transforms, he changes the figure of, he transforms himself into an angel of light. He's not an angel of light. It's just a veneer. It's a deception. It's a it's a smoke and mirrors. So those false apostles and teachers from Second Corinthians eleven, thirteen through fifteen, the false apostles, the deceitful workers, they made themselves look like 
apostles and Messiah and teachers of the Lord. Paul was dealing with them back in that day, right after the crucifixion, right after the resurrection. Satan wasted no time in infiltrating the church. That transforming themselves means to change in in appearance, to disguise, to masquerade. I've met people like that. I've seen people like that. I've called out people like that. And you know it's funny? People don't want to do that, especially if they've elevated them and put them on a stage or uh, given a platform. You know, they they don't want you to point that out. They don't want you to tell them, hey, prof- professional wrestling's fake. It's phony. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah it is. Politics. It's fake. It's phony. It's professional wrestling. Come on. Don't tell me that. I don't want to know that. This transformation, this deceptive power, that's what he does. And they will face their own destruction. They will face the same destruction that Satan and his angels will face. So how do you know? Well, you know him by their actions. You know him by their words. A servant of God wouldn't act like they do. Their deeds wouldn't be wicked, sinful. Their their actions wouldn't go against the Word. Again, folks, read your Bible. Listen to these Bible studies. Take notes. If you're getting the list, there's places at the bottom and the back of the page if you print it out for notes. If you want to do it digitally on your iPad or your phone, or whatever you're using, that's fine. But get this word inside of you because the day is coming when you won't have access to this. Feed now so that you'll be strong later. So that that word, metos gizmazo in the Greek, that's what Satan does. He makes you see him as something else than what he actually is. I've encountered him enough times to see him do that, take on different forms, different people, different things, but I always see it in his eyes. He'll have normal eyes one minute and blink, and then they won't be. They'll be serpentine eyes. They'll be snake eyes. I've seen that in people here in the natural Somebody confronted me at the end of a church service, Christian Heritage, and said something to me and smiled and blinked. And when he blinked, the eyes that I saw briefly were not human. But there was a crowd there. There were children around. There were people milling in the hallway. He knew I couldn't do anything about it and just smiled and walked away. That's how arrogant the enemy is. This is important. I would be doing it if it wasn't. I don't I don't waste my time. I don't waste your time. This is important that we get this now. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This means a complete overhaul of your mind, a complete overhaul of the way you think, a complete overhaul of your beliefs and your character. That word overhaul means to refit, to refurbish, to revamp the natural mind into a spiritual mind. When I did the things I did in the New Age and the occult, I didn't think I was a bad person. I think I was I thought I was a good person with special gifts from God. I had read books by great teachers from that world. I mean like encyclopedia thick books who took scripture out of context and convinced me that the demonic powers that I had had come from God. So I had to change once I got saved the way I thought, the way I saw those things. And initially I had to shun them. I had to get away from them. And then eventually, starting in 2007, the Lord began to pull me back towards that and show me things. 
and and I have to be honest with you, I fought him on it. I really did. He would show me stuff, and I'd say, Lord, why are you showing this? Why do you want me to go here? Why do you want me to go to this website? Or why do you want me to watch that movie? It's making me uncomfortable. But he was trying to get me to understand what I was up against, what the youth that I was ministering to and the people I was ministering to were up against. Don't put your head in the sand. It's not a very productive position anyway, but don't put your head in the sand. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. We can't think like we did before. We cannot think like the world. And that, I see, is the greatest deception in the church right now. The church sounds more like the world than the world sometimes. I see no difference. I see no delineation. The transformation, the metamorphosis, that is an ongoing process. Don't beat yourself up if you're not there that you're there yet. That's easy for you to say, Richard. No, it wasn't. Don't beat yourself up if you're not there yet. It's an ongoing process. Remember the saying, salvation is instantaneous. Sanctification is a lifelong process. It is a flow of perpetual change done by the Holy Spirit working in us through the Word, through the teachings, through the experiences. But He's always teaching. He's always there with you to remind you of what Yeshua said. That's the other thing. If you're being deceived, and I've seen people that I know who are, then I have to wonder, are you hearing the Holy Spirit? Whose voice are you hearing? Because the voice you're hearing doesn't line up with the Word. So this light, this kingdom of light, the great thing about light, sunlight, go sit out in the sun, what happens? You get healthier. It dries things out, it heals things, it cures things. We have to bask in the light of his glory through his word, through praise and worship music, through fellowshipping with other believers when you can. Through times like this where we may not see each other, be able to interact, but you can hear the voice, you can hear my intentions that comes from my spirit man inside. But we need to live it. See, that's was the message of Pentecost. The message of Pentecost was the kingdom of God was here. The power of the kingdom of God was here. It was real. Because what? You can't have light without a power source. You can't do this without the inf- the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost was God's way of lighting a path out of the darkness for mankind, a perpetual light that would shine through us. Isaiah prophesied in chapter 9, verse 2, the people who walk in darkness, that was me, have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. I didn't want to be in darkness. I didn't want to be without my family. I didn't want to be in bondage. I didn't want to be lied to anymore. I didn't want to be alone anymore. I wanted to be in the light. What happens if you have too much light? You're in darkness for too long. It becomes unhealthy. It's bad for your body. It's bad for your mind. It's bad for your mental health. As you have said in John 9, 5, as long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. Well, wait a second, Lord, you're not here right now. Yes, I am. I'm in you. He does that through the Holy Spirit in us. So that when you shine, when you speak, when you share, like Peter did in Acts chapter 3 when he stood up in Jerusalem and and told them about what they had done. In Acts 3, 19 and 20, they said, what shall we do? That should always be a question. That should come to you. What shall I do? What can I do? How can I get out of this? Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send you Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, who was preached to you before. 
as believers, we are to draw people to God through Yeshua into their lives. You can't browbeat them. You can't Bible thump them. You can't force them. You can't manipulate them. A true conversion comes when people are drawn to the light and they want out. That's why we're constantly being warned by Paul in Philippians 2.15 that you become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. A crooked and perverse generation. Oh, Paul, you haven't seen 2024. He was describing his world, but he's describing our world and the kingdom of darkness more powerful than ever before, but not as powerful as the kingdom of God. It is the direct opposite, the antithesis of the kingdom we live in. That's why you can't dabble in both. You can't have a foot in both. You can't visit both. You can only stay in one, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God. The darkness of this world and the kingdom and the kingdoms of this world, they've turned away from the truth. And it has exerted a corrupting influence on those who dwell in it. You can see the hand of the enemy all over it. We are what? To shine as lights by what you say, by what you do, how you live, the choices you make. Paul's saying as believers, we're stars in the sky and in, in this world of a light that penetrates the spiritual darkness of a perverted, corrupt, based world. He's the light of the world and so are we. I don't know how else to get this across to you folks. I am desperate for you to understand this. In everything you do, in your emails, and you're going to the store, in your interaction with people, shine. Manifest. That means to be brilliant, brilliantly seen. Don't let somebody wonder if you're a believer. Let them see it in your eyes. And we accomplish this by more than by what we say. It's by what we do. It's how we act. You know, in Egypt especially in areas where there is no power, when there was no power, they would take a candle and they'd put it in an alabaster or onyx vase. And guess what would happen? When the light went inside, the whole thing would glow and become luminous. That's exactly what happens to us when Yeshua comes into our hearts. Get up every day and say, Lord, search my heart. Like David did, if there's anything unclean in me, take it out. If there's anything in my life that keeps me from shining the way you need to shine, get it off of me, polish me, shine me. I want to be bright. I want to be luminous. I want people to find their way to you. So make us. Make us luminous. let Let us manifest your light to the lost, to the dying, to the children, to the to whoever we come across. When I meet people and I shake their hand, I look them straight in the eye. Two reasons. One, I want them to see who I am, and I want to see who they are. Some people like it. Some people don't. That's how I ride. That's who I am. I'm going to shine. I read the story, and I saved it. An Australian preacher went to a small church in the bush. He went there to preach, of course. That's why he was a preacher. And it was dusk, and he arrived, and sun's going down, but this place had no light. And he was wondering what, what he didn't know what he was going to do about it. Nobody told him he'd never been there before. And then he saw small lights twinkling in the darkness as they moved through the bush. The congregation was arriving. And each person had their own hurricane lamp. As they came in, it was lit. And they placed their lamps upon a shelf around the chapel wall. And as you would expect, pretty soon the whole place was flooded with light. 
each of them individually contributing the light they had to dispel the darkness. So your share, no matter how small you think it is, is needed in this world right now. It's desperately in need. It's desperately needed to illuminate the gospel of Messiah, the truth that will set them free. There's a lot of hurting people right now. They're hurting in their mind. They're hurting in their body. They're hurting in their spirit. And they need a word. They need hope. They need love. They need a smile. They need a hug. And you can't do that if you're not shining, if you're not polished, if you're not ready. That's why we want to show ourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent, uncontaminated children of God without blemish. We're faultless. We're unrebukable. The enemy has no place in us in the midst of a crooked, wicked, spiritually perverted and perverse generation among whom we can be seen as bright lights, stars of the kingdom of God shining out clearly into a dark world. holding fast, bursting forth, steadfastness. Our light's never going out, never dimming. No matter what's going on in our life, you have something rough going on, leave it home. You need help with it, reach out to somebody. Get a prayer partner. Reach out to me. Send me an email. Do, don't walk through this alone. Don't take your darkness and your heaviness and your depression and all the things that you have going on out with you. The world doesn't need that. You don't need that. Let the light of the Holy Spirit shine. Signs and wonders will confirm the word. Yes, they will. But love does it too. Grace does it too. Mercy, compassion, benevolence does it too. We need those miracles. We need him to shine. Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, physicist, inventor, writer, and theologian, said this about miracles. It has appeared to me that the real cause that there are so many false miracles, false revelations, etc., is that there are true ones. For it would not be possible that there should be so many false miracles unless they were true, nor so many false religions unless there was one that is true. For if all this had never been, it is impossible that so many others should have believed it. Remember, this guy's a thinker, theologian, smart, brilliant man. Thus, instead of concluding that there are no true miracles, since there are so many false, we must, on on the contrary, say that there are true miracles since there are so many false ones, and false miracles exist only for the reason that there are true and only because there is one that is true. One religion, one Messiah, one Savior. For the counterfeit to work, there must be real ones that it can mimic. And let me tell you what, folks, if the church is absent and abdicates its position of power, The enemy is glad to fill it in. False messiahs, false prophets will rise up, he said, and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I've warned you about this ahead of time. And that's going to happen after the church is gone. It's really going to be in effect. Revelation 13, 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth, the Antichrist, by those signs which he has granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Revelation sixteen fourteen. for they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You know, when those things come out of the pit, When everything that's been in prison gets out, anybody who tells you that there's no rapture, that they're going to be here to the end, tell them to read Revelation. They don't want to be here. 
You don't want to be here. But it will end. Revelation 19, 20, the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And let me get this clear to you. Not all miracles that you see a proof of God's approval on that person or what's going on in that place in in Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 through 5, the Lord issues an edict about lying signs and wonders from false prophets and, and dreamers of dreams who speak words and deceive the people to turn them away from the Lord your God, to turn them away from the Word, to turn them away from the true faith. Churches and arenas and meeting halls have been filled with people like this even to this day. They will be punished severely. Hear his voice. Know him and follow him. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them and they follow me. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are unlikely to be fooled by another voice. I had another voice recently talk to me as if it was the Lord and what it said didn't line up with the word, didn't line up with his nature, didn't line up with what I knew of him. It had me for a second, but then I realized, no, that can't be you, Lord, is it? No, it's not. Oh, who can mimic you so well that they almost deceived me? And the Lord said, who do you think? So, folks, let me tell you, just because you think you're hearing God, just because you think you can't be deceived, be very, very careful. But the natural non-spirit-filled mind can be deceived because it has to rely on its own abilities, its own knowledge, its own discernment. Without the discerning of spirits from the Holy Spirit, you are key to deception. You've left the window open, the door open for them to come in. So if anybody tells you that the miracles don't happen anymore, Realize you have somebody who does not understand the word, does not know him, because that is a naturalistic philosophy of the church. The that naturalism ar- arrives from the fact that they believe there are natural properties and causes, and supernatural or spiritual explanations are dis- excluded or discounted. Well, there are no miracles anymore, brother. They died with the last apostle. There are no more spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit doesn't do that anymore. Eh, wrong. Thank you for playing. Pick up your parting gifts on the way out. Here, have a fresh new Bible. Maybe you should read it. And who benefits from that thinking? Only one Hasatan in the kingdom of darkness. C.S. Lewis says he, the Lord, is not natural. He inhabits eternity. He dwells in a high and holy place. Heaven is his throne, not his vehicle. Earth is his footstool, not his vesture. One day he will dismount to both and make a new heaven and earth. And he is not to be identified even with the divine spark in man. He is God and not man. He goes on to say a naturalistic Christianity leaves out all that is specifically Christian. The Bible that we have is naturally supernatural. It makes no distinction between natural and supernatural. Everything is supernatural because it's God from beginning to end. From the very first, let there be light to the physical return of the one who said it and who will be forevermore. Remember what it said in Revelation 21, 23 to 25. In the city, the New Jerusalem, has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. Jesus, the light of the world, literally. And the nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the earth will enter the city in all their glory. And the gates will never be closed at the end of the day, because there will be no end of the day, because there will be no night there. It will be a glorious, perpetual kingdom of light. And until then, we 
art to shine and be that city on the hill. Never put the light out. Shine it in the darkness. Lead the people out. Set them free. Father, in the name of Yeshua, your son, I pray for myself and my brothers and sisters and everyone who listens for your light to glow inside of them and come out of their pores and come out of their eyes and come through their words and come through their thoughts and their deeds and their intention. I pray, Lord, that they be empowered in a way that they've never felt before, spiritual capacitors that have absorbed your power and hold it in them until you need them to use it, that they can lay hands on the sick so that they'll recover, give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, to raise the dead, the lame would walk, the signs of the Messiah would be present again in the remnant that will go into the darkness and set the captives free, that'll go look for the lamb that has wandered off and is in danger, that'll get on their knees and pray and intercede and stand in the gap that will come before you in the throne room, saying their name, crying from their heart for them. Lord, help us to let your light so shine so that we can be the kingdom of light that you needed to be in this time, in this dark hour. And I pray from my heart for myself and everyone who listens and agrees that this would be so in Yeshua's name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord, Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, give you shalom. I'm Richard Grund. This has been The Porch on Firefall Talk Radio.